months of frustration boiled over onto the street. This is, a, in our minds, a, a disaster, right? This is a humanitarian crisis, and in any other disaster, a natural disaster, government would move quickly to set up shelters, to uh, mobilize resources. Residents living in houses near the sprawling tent city erected four months ago say they don't feel safe, with police reporting increases in property and violent crime. There's like feces at my kid's school, in my lane. But, you know, it's more just those people don't want to be using my kid's school as a bathroom. It's just not fair for them. And camp residents say they don't want to be here either. We share the same feelings. It's the only difference is you're not really able to... <laughs> reflect or do anything, take yourself out of it. Angela Peterkin has been here three months. After her roommates moved out, she couldn't find a place she could afford. Then homeless, she lost her job. Being able to have like um, clean clothes and good hygiene and stuff like that, I think obviously reflects like the job interview um, kind of phase of things. So I just kind of feel like I'm stuck, stuck in a rut here. So it's not just something that's happening today. Tanya Fader has spent two decades working in Vancouver's downtown east side and says its homelessness can no longer be contained. Collectively, people need to realize this is all of our problem. This is not a downtown east side specific problem. This just happens to be the community that responded fast and earlier. She says more housing and more types of housing and addiction support is what's needed. And she's hopeful that perhaps increased frustration from neighborhoods seeing the problem like never before may force quicker action. The city of Vancouver is expecting a report from staff on options this week. This is actually the ridiculous onesie that I wear to stay warm at night. Peter can just hopes the options come quickly. Susanna De Silva, CBC News, Vancouver.